Crystal Wyndham is design director of the interior design group for Cadillac. After uh, studying at Center for Creative Studies in Detroit, one of the country's leading design schools, she joined Chevrolet as an interior design manager. Uh, over the years, she's held a number of positions, worked on a number of projects inside GM, both interior and exterior, until 2016 when she took the helm of the Cadillac Interior Design Group. An award-winning designer and community leader, uh, I am honored to have Crystal join us behind the wheel here at Rides and Drives today. Crystal, welcome. Thank you, Harvey, for having me. Oh, it, it is my pleasure. My it's my pleasure. So first of all, um, you ha clearly have a passion for both design and automobiles. Can you tell me where both of those passions developed and how they came together? Oh, very good question. Harvey, I am from Detroit. I was born and raised in Detroit. So I know just being around um, seeing cars and being in the Motor City that that had some kind of impact. But it did not start, the love of automotive design did not start traditionally like you, you hear other designers talk about. Actually, it started with my love of drawing and being creative. My first real structured art class was in 10th grade. And I was, I was enjoying myself. This was, I was in my element. And I remember I did not know what path I wanted to take. My parents saw that I didn't seem to have any direction or interest. The 10th grade art teacher, Jim Jennings, asked for my parents to come see him for parent-teacher conference. And my mom said, hey, that's gonna be the last stop. I wanna make sure all your academics are in line. She was an educator, so I, I understood it. But after meeting with him, he confirmed that I had talent. So I was, I was just fired up with this opportunity. He led me down to the College for Creative Studies, and it was there that I could nurture my talent. I built a portfolio. And it was interesting because having supportive parents, it was so key to me being able to do this. I know they were very concerned that I was going to be a starving artist and they got busy right along with me and understanding how I could apply my love of art and design to a field where I could develop a career. So it really started there. Um, after being accepted at the College for Creative Studies, one of the chairman, the chairman of transportation to be exact, Carl Olson, you may be familiar with that name, mm -hmm. came to me and he said, hey, why don't you apply? I really hadn't thought about it before. I really didn't know that there was such a path. He paid for an intro to auto class for me and took the class and I fell in love once again. And it was a, a big challenge for me. I, it, it was the fact that I would be designing a product that you can see go down the road one day, the fact to be able to create or be a part of a team to dream up what the future would look like was just amazing. So I kept going. I kept going. Great, great. <laughs> so just curious, what kind of car did you learn to drive in? Uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> Actually, several. Um, it was a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Mm -hmm. That was one. Um, we had several Chevrolets and Buicks. So we were definitely um, big three supporters in sure. our family. Yes. Great. What car was your dream car when you were when you were a kid and first starting to drive? Wow, that's a very good question. I know that. I really enjoy looking at Corvettes. My favorite Corvette is the 1963 split window. The surfacing on, on Corvettes are just, just beautiful. Um, so I, I would say that the fast cars really caught my attention. Yeah, I would say Corvette. So you've designed both interiors and exteriors. Um, how are those disciplines similar? How are they different? 
And now how does that influence your work? I have to say I am very fortunate to have experienced both. It is, both are equally <laughs> challenging. It has a different viewpoint of design, a, a both. For example, the exterior, you talk a lot about proportions. You talk a lot about wheel size. The technology of the headlamps and tail lamps, that is a project in and of itself. So I have a lot of respect for the, my exterior peers and counterparts. On the inside, what's amazing about the interior is that you are setting a mood. You are bringing in and incorporating all kinds of technology. You're working with color and trim to make sure that their appointments work in harmony together and they flow well with the design. Proportions matter too uh, on the inside. And I would say as an interior designer, you're, you really go to your roots of being an industrial designer on, on all the pieces, right? You have the overall gesture of the interior and then all the bits and pieces and all of it has to come together. And a human being has to live in this environment. So that's, sure. that's the other aspect. So I, I love both. Obviously you benchmark competitors, but where else do you guys look for inspiration? Our inspiration, definitely we are watching the competition. We look at our brand and then we find points on where we can stand out, where we can stand out from the competition. And more importantly, we look at our customers and we talk with our customers for inspiration. One of our recently revealed vehicles, the 21 Escalade is a very good example of that. We learn upfront, even though the vehicle is doing excellent in the market, right? We continually want to raise the bar, continually raise the bar. One of the things that our customers have said, with a vehicle in that proportion, massive, right? We want a car-like experience on the inside. Wow, okay, how do we do that? That is our inspiration. So we got fired looking at how we can really push and pull on the interior to move the instrument panel, have the IP, the instrument panel flow into the doors, right? Mm -hmm. Look at how we can design the council and get more of a cockpit approach, more of a driver-centric approach. I would say not only do we look at our competition, we understand why someone would pick Cadillac as, as a brand or this, this vehicle for General Motors and find ways where we can stand out, but we do that with the customer. I'm glad you brought up the Escalade because to me that represents a huge transformation in Cadillac interior design. What were the moments that allowed you to push past maybe some of the traditional areas where you would stop and say, oh, this, is, this is good enough? Our vision of Cadillac and where we wanted to move the brand recently it started with the escala show car and the escalade took on those elements as a vision for the brand one of the things that we said as a team to keep us going through the challenges because the escalade is so important to the brand hey it's only the escalade so anytime you were at a crossroad where you had to make a hard decision. We wanted to make sure we made the right decision. So we had this, this mantra that we would say, hey, it's only the Escalade, right? So we would stay focused. I would say specifically, designing an OLED, the first of its kind into this architecture was one of the biggest challenges, right? Mm -hmm. Packing it in, pushing the instrument panel down as far as possible, and allowing this to be a showpiece. With that display as large as it is, you can think about the loading sequences that we had to go through. And the design team was a part of that. 
we actually mocked up with our chief engineer what it would be like assembling the vehicle together. And we all rallied together to figure out a way to make sure all the closeouts were designed beautifully, but also enable this delicate piece to be installed safely and, and stay intact, right? Yep. The lighting coming in on a free, you know, freestanding display uh, was a challenge, right? So the light coming in from all angles. So we were able to work with our supplier and they have a louver design on the lens to help deflect some of that light coming in, right? So there, there are numerous um, challenges as we all face, but that's what I love about my job. And for Cadillac, we want to be the first. We want to continue that. So you have to have that right mindset that, hey, I can, I'm comfortable taking on this risk. I'm comfortable diving in and working out solutions as a team. So the OLED and, the, and how that came to be in this environment, I would say was the number one challenge. And um, we made it. We did it as a team. Great. Great. Um, and actually, that leads into another question I have. Um, technology is playing a larger and larger role. Things like the OLED screen, like Super Cruise. How did those influence the design today and as you look into the future? Super Cruise is awesome. And we have an enhanced version of Super Cruise starting with the 21 Escalade. They have a lane changing feature. So I've experienced the product and I look at it as an excellent driving aid. It's unbelievable um, if you haven't experienced it yourself, but the freeway driving and really letting go is um, a comfort level that some may or may not have, but I, I did it, love it. So from a design perspective, how can we complement this? How can we allow our customers to sit back, relax, the comfort of the seat, the comfort of the controls being just in the right place so that they can relax. Be still, you know, ready to take over the wheel. However, just really embracing uh, that technology. Now, there, there are some, I would say, uh, features that go along with Super Cruise to help support the camera and there's an indicator on the steering wheel. So one of the things that we like to do for Cadillac is as this technology comes into the vehicle, we want to style it and integrate it in a unique way. So you, you'll see that there's a band on, right, a light band on the rim section is integrated in. Um, as well as the camera on the steering column. In, in terms of Cadillac itself, then you talk about, you know, making sure you design for Cadillac for the brand. What are the key pillars of the brand that drive your design work? Absolutely. It starts with that leading technology, innovation, brave design, and Breaking off from brave design comes all the attention to details. Yeah, it's not just about the, the overall surfacing. You know, the, the form language is very clean, sheer surfacing, flowing design, making sure that we have the right, I would say, canvas for the color and trim team to really have the right appointments that work in harmony together. There are large pieces of wood on this interior, on the instrument panel, on the console. They are beautiful. And, and they're, they're exotic looking woods too. So really that's important. That goes back to our pillar, that attention to detail and craftsmanship. Just a few more things um, relative to attention to detail. I look for a full sensory engagement opportunity for our customer. So on the back of the OLED, it is wrapped with stitching. The crest is illuminated on the back. 
that was an idea that came a little bit later in the program, but we tapped into that idea, worked with the engineers. And as you approach the Escalade, that illuminates. It welcomes you. Next, on the vents. I talk a lot about proportions on the interior, getting that instrument panel really down as, as much as we can. But we needed to have thin vents to go along with that, that go horizontal across the instrument panel. To have a, a clean line, we were able to have the veins pivot at the rearwardmost point to keep that consistent line going across. And when you're in that perfect position, you get an audible feedback, a click. So just really just digging deep, going to that next level um, where the customer can continue to discover the joys of their purchase throughout the time that you have this vehicle. Awesome. That's great. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about GM in general. Um, you know, it's no secret that women have more seats at the table at GM now than ever before. How has that helped transform or impact the product and the culture of the company from your point of view? It is a diverse viewpoint, definitely, that General Motors embraces. I look at being a female designer, looking at our customer base, we wear so many hats, we do. And by having that perspective be a part of the design team up front, it allows us to cover more bases, cover more features, storage opportunities for choices. So it has uh, female leaders um, like myself that can be decision makers and really influence the product from the beginning. Over the course of your career, are there products or projects that you've worked on that you're most proud of? And what are some of those? Working at Chevrolet, the Impala was one of the vehicles from entering as the director, interior director, where I had a chance to start from the foundation. The Impala signified for the brand a direction similar to what I'm experiencing here in Cadillac with the, with the Escalade. So it really helped set the tone for Chevrolet and move the mark for such an iconic vehicle, the Impala. Um, it has a lot of presence in you know, the culture and once again, I would say, for similar reasons, the Escalade is one of my, my favorite projects. As we enter the uh, next phase with, with battery, battery electric vehicles, that I'm sure will be one of my favorites in the bunch as well. Great. So what advice do you have for young designers who are looking to follow, say, in your footsteps as uh, into the automotive field today? What, what are some of the things that you wish you'd known when you got started? Oh, very, yes, I like that question. And, you know, given the opportunity like this, I do like to take time out for those that are listening and if I can influence them. First and foremost, this, my story is my story. There are many paths to getting to your dreams, right? I think confirming that you have talent early on helps and being passionate behind it. Also, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the work and rigor. So if you don't love it, if you like it, that's okay. But if you love it, it makes it a lot easier to put in that work. The next I would say, make sure you look for a mentor. Make sure you look for someone out there in the industry that is doing the job. They will be a big help for you to understand what the expe expectations are in the job and possibly sponsor you in, in the future. So you, you never know what, where that relationship could go. Um, I've had several mentors throughout my career. So I encourage, don't stop at one. Don't stop at 
finding one that looks exactly like you. Actually, I encourage you to have a variety of, of mentors. So diversity is always important. Uh, next, I would say, be uniquely you. I learned early in my career that lesson on emulating and trying to be like other designers. That's not what the companies want you for. They want a unique perspective. And you have to be bold and brave to stand on your own to do that. But it's a process, right? Um, and then I would say, um, lastly, that really helped me in my career, those big pivotal moments is taking on the hard jobs, right? Raising your hand and getting out of your comfort zone and allowing yourself to grow in it. And, and that's part of the brave aspect, right? I, I do wanna conclude with how important this is to me, what I wish I had. That was part of your question. What do I wish I had? What, you know, I, like I said, after starting at the College for Creative Studies, I learned about automotive design. I wish I knew about it earlier. So we do have a program called You Make a Difference. It allows us to go out to middle schools and high schools, to the art classes, and introduce the students to automotive design, because that's something that I wish I had. That's great. That's really all my questions, and I really appreciate your taking the time to talk to us here. Yes, yes. This has been my pleasure. Thank you.